Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. Now for today's video, I thought it'd be fun to go in and take a look at a popular Titanic theory that seems to have gained some traction in recent years that proposes a way that it may have been possible for the Titanic to have avoided hitting the iceberg in the first place. The theory states that if the Titanic's lookouts, Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, had simply had binoculars with them on the night of the Titanic's impact with the iceberg, then they could have seen the iceberg sooner and thus had more time to warn the Titanic's bridge crew about the iceberg so they could have successfully steered the Titanic around the iceberg and thus have avoided an impact with it. Now, it is common knowledge that Titanic's lookouts, Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee, did not have any binoculars with them on this particular voyage. And we're also going to be discussing why they didn't have any binoculars with them as well. So, all right, well, join me in today's video as we discuss this popular theory and see if there's any truth to it. Oh, and if you would like to take a couple of extra steps to help support the channel a little bit more, there's a merch store and a Patreon for this channel in the links below. All right, everybody, well, hey, with the intro out of the way, let's get into it. All right, so to start off today's video, let's first discuss why Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee didn't have binoculars with them in the first place. Because, believe it or not, binoculars were a common thing for ships embarking on a transatlantic voyage to have. They did make it easier in some situations for lookouts to spot dangerous things like icebergs and other ships. Well, the reason they didn't have any binoculars was completely due to a simple accident. You see, while the Titanic was still docked in Southampton, there was a last-minute shuffle of the Titanic's senior officers, which caused one of the Titanic's senior officers, Second Officer David Blair, to be removed from the Titanic, and another officer took his place. Now, when David Blair left the Titanic, he simply forgot that he had a key to the lockers where the binoculars were stored on the Titanic with him. And when he left the Titanic, he took that key with him, which thus prevented the Titanic's lookouts from being able to access the binoculars that were stored on board the Titanic. Now, depending on what source you use, there are several different versions of the story where David Blair took the key to where the binoculars were kept with him when he left the Titanic. One version says that the binoculars were actually in David Blair's cabin, and when he left the Titanic, he took the key to the cabin with him, and because he did this, the crew couldn't get into that cabin to get the binoculars, which, honestly, I kind of find that hard to believe because... You would think that all the Titanic's crew members would have like a master key that could get them into any cabin on the Titanic if they needed to, so I don't really believe that story. I tend to believe the original story that simply states that the binoculars were in a locker and he took the only key to that locker with him when he left the Titanic. But regardless of which story you believe, one way or another, David Blair took the key to where the binoculars were kept with him and this is why the lookouts didn't have access to them on the Titanic's maiden voyage. So, now that all of you watching this video now know why the lookouts on the Titanic didn't have any binoculars with them on the maiden voyage, that brings up the ultimate point of this video. Did the absence of the binoculars contribute in any way to the Titanic striking the iceberg? Well, honestly, the answer may surprise you. Ultimately, no. I honestly believe that the fact that the lookouts on the Titanic didn't have access to binoculars on the Titanic's maiden voyage contributed nothing to the Titanic striking the iceberg. And in case you're curious why, I'll explain. You see, it all depends on the circumstances that the lookouts are dealing with on whatever time their shift is in the Titanic's crow's nest, if or if not, they're going to use binoculars. And on the case of the night that the Titanic struck the iceberg, I honestly believe they wouldn't have been using binoculars at all. You see, binoculars are most useful on a ship during the daytime because during the day you can look way out across the horizon and see things that may pose a risk to ships and then you can use binoculars to verify what you're seeing and make sure that what you're seeing is really a risk to your vessel. However, at nighttime, the ocean gets extremely dark and I mean like if you've never been on a ship at sea at night, it I can't describe to you how dark it gets when you're out there. I mean, honestly, it's just like a big black void when you're standing on the deck of a ship and looking out at night. This is especially the case if there's no moon. When the moon is out, you can see a little bit out at sea, but if there's no moon, I mean, it's just pitch black out there. I couldn't believe it the first time I saw it myself. And in those circumstances, the only way to spot something that's dangerous to a ship is to try to spot the outline of it against the horizon. So in the case of Titanic, 
What Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee were looking for when they were trying to spot the iceberg was the shape of the iceberg against the horizon. So that would be the best way for them to spot it. You know, they could maybe see the iceberg, block out a few stars that were ahead of the ship and all that, and that would be how they would spot it. Now, imagine those conditions, but then trying to use binoculars. What do you see if you look through binoculars and it's completely black outside and there's nothing really you're looking at and you're looking through binoculars? You just see more black. You know, you can't see anything. So honestly, the best thing for Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee to do while they were trying to find an iceberg that may pose a risk to the Titanic is simply stand on the Titanic's crow's nest and look out on the horizon and see if they could spot the outline of the iceberg against the horizon. And that's exactly what they were doing. And that's, this is also not even taking into account the cold water mirage effect that they were dealing with on that night that was obscuring their view even more. However, there was some trickery involved with the cold water mirage that made them think what they were seeing was something different than what they were really seeing. And I'm not going to go into all that in this video. If you would like to learn more about the cold water mirage, I will include a link to that video in the description below because... It really distorted their vision and the cold water mirage made them think they were seeing one thing, but in fact, they were seeing something completely different. So be sure you go and watch that video if you wanna learn more. But yeah, ultimately the fact that the lookouts didn't have binoculars that night really didn't contribute anything because they simply wouldn't have been using them on the night that the Titanic struck the iceberg. So yeah, now all of you watching this video now understand why the fact that the lookouts on the Titanic didn't have binoculars on the Titanic's maiden voyage really didn't contribute anything to the Titanic disaster. I hope you guys enjoyed this mini episode of Historic Travels. If you like this video, be sure you leave it a like. And if you're new here, please subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, everybody.